it's a five step so here's my hypothesis test so the hypothesis test uh, has a five it's a five step process step one is to define the hypothesis okay uh, don't forget we have a null position okay we have h0 and we have ha an alternative position the default position here is that there's no difference between the observed and the expected and more importantly okay what the default position is is that the is that the observed follow the specified distribution okay maybe i'll write that down yeah that are observed that are observed frequencies okay okay frequencies okay follow okay okay uh, are expected distribution distribution okay okay in other words that there is fit between between the two between the two distributions and the alternative is that the that there is difference okay that the observed distribution is that the observed the observed frequencies okay or the observed distribution okay okay uh, does not follow does not follow 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 the hypothesized distribution which is this uh, this distribution down here so it does not follow the expected the expected uh, distribution okay distribution okay uh, so this is our this is our hypothesis test we have a null position that's that there's no difference between what we've observed and what we expect okay and we have an alternative that's where there's evidence to suggest that what we've observed deviates away from what we'd expect to happen okay uh, like all hypothesis tests, there is actually a test statistic involved. So actually, in this particular case here, uh, our test statistic. Okay. So in what we're going to have is we're going to have a test statistic part two. Okay. Our test statistic. Okay. And our test statistic is going to be the chi squared test statistic, which is chi squared is equal to. Well, it's the difference between the observed and the expected. It's the square of the difference between the observed and the expected relative to the expected. Okay, so it's the frequency of observed minus the frequency of expected squared relative to the expected frequencies. Okay, and it's that for every single observation. Okay, it's that it's that difference for all of our observations. If that makes sense. Okay, uh, and also there's a set of degrees of freedom associated with this particular with this particular test. There's well defined degrees of freedom. Okay, and uh, now in this case here, the degrees of freedom uh, for for air for air thing for air particular distribution is going to be is going to be the number of levels associated with with our with our dependent variable. Okay, the number of levels associated with this particular variable. Okay minus one okay so let's say it's the degrees of freedom are going to be equal to i'm going to say it's equal to k k minus one okay it's how many levels or how many particular uh, groups we have uh, with respect with respect to our uh, with respect to the, the variable that we're that we're measuring okay so for me to for me to find out how far the obs observations are away from the expected distribution, we need to calculate this test statistic. So what we need to calculate is we need to calculate the observed minus the expected squared. Okay, we need to find the squared difference between these two values. Okay, uh, and then what we need to do is we need to calculate the observed minus the expected squared relative to the expected frequencies. Okay, so we need to do this here. So let's 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 try this out. Uh, actually, let me just get me get my scientific calculator here. Okay, to help in this particular process. Okay, so what we're going to have is we're going to have our first observed is 170. So 170 minus the expected. So it's the first observed. 170 minus the expected gives us a minus four. Minus four squared gives us gives us 16 here. Uh, the next one is 160 minus 167 gives us minus 7. Minus 7 squared gives us 49. The next one is 100 minus 66. Uh, then we're going to have minus 66 squared. So we're going to have minus 66 squared gives us 4,356. Then we have 120 minus 166 uh, is going to give us minus, uh, minus 46. So we have 46 to be squared. Uh, it's going to be 2. 116 and finally well not finally uh, what we have here is 150 minus minus uh, 167 is going to be 17 squared which is going to be 289 and finally we have 300 minus 167 uh, it's going to give us 133 and when we square that we get 17,689 okay 
So these are, I suppose, are the square distances that the observations are away from the expected. Or it's the square difference between the observed distribution and our expected distribution. That's another way to think about that. But what we need for the chi square test statistic, okay, which is listed here at part two, is we need those observed square distances, okay, relative to the expected frequencies, okay, what we'd expect to occur with respect to our our, our null position, the distribution associated with our with our with our null position. So actually, I'm going to take these and I'm going to divide them by the expected frequencies. So we have 16 divided by 166 gives us a value of uh, zero point. It's about 0 0.10, okay, 0 0.10. Okay, uh, we're going to have 49 divided by 167. Uh, it's going to give us a value of about uh, 0 0.29. Okay, 0 0.29. And uh, we're going to have 4356 divided by 166. It's going to give us a value of about approximately.